Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new Minecraft video. Uh, it's another... Uh, I built more Poseidon. So it's another like video going over all of that and how it works. Obviously these are the last couple decks of the um, cargo section of the ship, and they are completely done with, so... We'll just head down to the low to the deck below, and I'm gonna make my way aft, but I'm not gonna really show you anything just yet. Um, you'll see why once we start getting to everything. But we, I do have some cool stuff to talk about, because all of the the rooms um, on the tank top and orlop decks have been like vastly changed, even like the engine rooms and all that stuff. So, first room I'm going to show you guys at the back of the ship because it's the first one to be fully covered and th er, is the condenser room. This is going to be the last update that even remotely involves the condenser room, so uh, take a look at the finished product, I guess. It's a small little thing, not that big. Up next and slightly more uh, important, we have the diesel generators. And with the uh, electric switchboards on either side of the ship, we've got these giant, we've got the giant towering roof overhead. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Heading up these stairs here to the top of this area, we have the Orlop deck sign, and then we have the engineer's lounge, as well as the, uh, as of yet unfinished, pantry. to do this. Alright, and there we go. That's a nice thing too about like doing these updates is it helps me catch things I may have missed. We have the defrosting room as well as these rooms over here. We have what, you know these main rooms look like they don't look the best, mostly because of just how lantern placement works, but it is still fairly nice. Closing those doors up. We have the ex the, the main engineer's lounge is fairly sparse, as are all of the engineer's quarters. Just a small room with tables and chairs to get a nice break. The ship's medical offices are like this. They've got, you know, doctor's office, doctor's bedroom, exam rooms, quarantine all looks like that. And heading aft, we have more. You've obviously all seen this, I'm just kind of showing off all the lights and stuff. Because it does really change how the rooms look. I have to fix that, because that is the wrong roofing. It's supposed to be sandstone, to kind of fit with the yellow of the room a little bit better. It does kind of look like the back rooms now that I think about it. Good thing I didn't use, like, yellow carpet. Because then it would be, like kind of insane. Now, obviously when we hop up to the next deck, uh, things are going to get kind of crazy. Well, okay, not really. But we are going to get to introduce, like, cabins. Like, passenger cabins. Stuff for people to lay down. And, like, rooms that people are going to... Passengers are going to use regularly. And obviously that's like a big leap forward when it comes to the ship and its functioning and all that stuff, because now we have moved out of the part of the ship where it's mostly crew stuff, which means a lot of the architecture is going to change, a lot of the feel of the ship is going to change. Obviously, this is a very Spartan room. Um, no one would really like to use it, and it's a, just a little too modern for, like, you know, a grand ocean liner. So we're going to finally start seeing what the ship is supposed to be. Just be clear, engineer's lounge is correct, yes, okay. So, heading aft, we have the uh, sec um, uh, secondary dining room, I guess. Just kind of a sm small room here. I say small, it's like probably one of the biggest rooms on the ship, aside from... Okay, no, that's a lie, it's definitely not, so small does count. And then the main dining room, here. Just this big old thing with a metric fuck ton of lights. Um, heading all the way aft, we have this room here, and the galley, which looks like this now. And heading up 
finally, we have the second class quarters. And it is a strange spot. Again, it's all below the waterline, so everything's kind of weird. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with all of this, because this whole slope is just insanely angled, and all of this is second class cabins. I don't really know how I'm going to deal with that, how I'm going to fix that, but we'll see how it goes, because I think I'll just have to kind of fight the hull of the ship like you see here. So, I obviously went with a very interesting, uh, this is what an average cabin looks like, by the way. I went with a very interesting design for, like, the inside of the second class area. I think I'm going to only use the mangrove stuff for this deck, and I'll just make it dark oak the rest of the way up. And uh, for the floor, I'm using sandstone and uh, dark con or black terracotta, I believe, yeah. And yeah, so it's obviously very detailed. You got a lot of patterns, and all of these crew doors are just stairs that go deeper into the ship. And we also have the second class stairwell here, just the nice little main area here, and the H deck sign. This is the lowest passenger deck in the ship, so. Then, heading aft. So, the big thing we have here is the pool. This is going to be the second class pool. It'll kind of stretch out over the next deck up. And, yeah, no, that's like a big thing. Because this, this is the first bit of groundwork for a passenger public space. Like, aside from the stairs. Which doesn't totally count. Because it's just stairs. But, yeah. So, heading aft, we have... Or, actually, we're heading forward in the ship directions all mixed up. We have crew spaces, crew quarters, a bathroom, the first one of the first ones on the ship. Then we have the pool tanks and the pool maintenance room. There's going to be another room for the first class pool once they get that built. Um, and then we have the chief engineer's cabin, which is just mostly just like a, this office area here, as well as a small little space there. Chief engineer. We have a workshop space over here, and on the other side of the engine room, we have uh, crew cabins. And then, down here, we're starting to get the first lights for the engine room. Now, I don't think it really needs saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. These rooms are going to be extremely dark once they're finished. Um, there will be natural light flowing in through these holes here, but aside from that, it's going to be very, very dark. There just isn't much to to look at. You know, like, the lighting just doesn't... Like, we're seeing some of it in the condenser and generator rooms, but it's going to get bad in this in the engine and boiler rooms, because they are huge. Like, absolutely gigantic. So the next big room we have is the fan rooms over the boiler rooms. I did my best to design these to what I kind of did for my Titanic thing got the giant fan machines. I'm not going to do the um, fanning details like I had on the other one because I don't think they, because they don't copy with World Edit. So yeah, we have those. We have six of them in total going from Boiler Room 1 to Boiler Room 6. And uh, yeah, no, they're all the same except for this one which has to deal with the sides of the ship starting to taper in. And then, we have another crew space, which is an escape hatch for the cargo holds. And then, we have third class cabins. So this is the uh, main aesthetic for third class, all of their cabin hallways, stuff like that. You can also see the uh, cargo hatches starting to kind of rise through the ship. Uh, typical third class cabin looks like this. It's a pretty simple thing. And they use mangrove doors. On top of that, the class staircases are going to be kind of separated rooms with glass windows. So that'll be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, there are two compartments worth of third class cabins on this deck. They are going to be much more the higher we get in the ship. Um, and yeah, then heading aft, we have the crew quarters. Just a small little room 
very much Titanic inspired with these going up here and then yeah. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I kind of threw those um emergency exits for the cargo holds in last minute. Uh yeah. But it also allows me to add that door in, which means that this is the first deck since the start of the project, since the, the tank top deck, that allows you to walk from one end of the ship all the way to the other. Uh, aside from that, you have these decks here where you have to go up or down at least one story to get from one end of the ship to the other, and, you know, sometimes you'll have to go down, up or down two, depending on which way you need to go. And yeah, that about concludes that, so I'm going to kind of add or at least try to add this segment here where I delete this thing on the plan module, or the, the, plan, the height plan thing, so that way you can see just kind of what the progress is. And from now on, there is also going to be another little trick to tracking the progress, and that is going to be the how many rows of portholes there are, because obviously we are now high enough in the ship that to where the next deck is going to have portholes, finally. I don't really know what I was thinking, putting passenger cabins below the waterline. Honestly, it didn't turn out that bad, uh, all things considered. I think it turned out quite nicely, actually, and, you know, it allows me to kind of demo some stuff for, you know, first and second class and stuff. Or, actually, no, second and third class. First class hasn't even been attempted yet, and won't be until, uh, I believe, E deck. Or is that F deck? Yeah, that's F deck. So F deck is where you're gonna start really seeing what first class is gonna be like, and I'm excited for that because obviously that's like the centerpiece of the ship, like the insane dining room that's gonna be absolutely huge. I need to be very careful not to talk it up too much because I have done a lot of I've done a lot of yapping when it comes to that, and I'm not sure if my building skills will actually be able to. Um, fulfill that, or live up to that. So yeah, hopefully it is, it's enough. I would really like it to be. I am, um, I'm very excited, and I want to see this vision just brought to life. And yeah, oh, and expect uh, more videos on like Roblox and stuff coming soon. Uh, Naval experiences. The guy, people who made Shipwrecked, have a very interesting update in the works. Uh, I won't say too much about. But yeah, no, I am excited to see where all of that goes and how all of that works, you know? Um, yeah, uh, Ta Maritime Interactive, they've been doing a lot of weird stuff as of late. Uh, I don't really know what's going on with them. And, Mar and Naval Role-Playing Association has like four or five different ships that are like on the very verge of completing. I'm weirded out by the Corinth. I have no idea... Like, that one seems like I might need to do a video just joining the engineering department for a day because that looks incredible, what they're doing down there. Um, but, yeah, no. I'll have to see to all that because this is... The whole thing is looking very, very interesting. Like, the scene uh, for Roblox boat games. And, uh, yeah, no. I, uh, I will see you all in the next video I'm gonna kinda hop up just kinda give you like a top-down view of the entire thing I think that's about where the midway point of the ship is uh, it's like I've started to notice this um like compared to the paper the ship actually feels kinda small like cuz I use graph paper to do all my planning, and this this design is three papers long. So it is quite interest. It is quite interesting, but yeah, no, that is about what the ship looks like from a top-down view. Uh, you've obviously got to kind of squint through the clouds and stuff, but yeah, no, that's all I've got for uh, this video today. Uh, I hope to see you all in the next one, and uh, yeah, that's all for now. Bye bye.